Take it away. Cool. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Michael Gerstenhaber, and I'm a product manager at Datadog. And I'm here today to talk about monitoring EKS. Uh, how many of you are familiar with Datadog already? Uh, how many of you are using it today? We're collecting tens of trillions of metrics, traces, and log events from our customers around the world. And increasingly, those customers are moving to a Kubernetes and orchestrated ecosystem. You might know us from our extensive integrations with more than 250 different technologies that we cover out of the box. Uh, and you might not be using all these technologies, but we're there to support you, uh, whatever off-the-shelf uh, component that you might use. And we're excited to support uh, cutting-edge technologies like what Amazon announced last week. We're proud to welcome Amazon to the uh, Kubernetes community. By monitoring EKS, you'll need to monitor, monitor not only the hardware, your clusters, your EC2 machines uh, themselves, and the Kubernetes components uh, that are now enabling increasing velocity and scale, but the applications running inside those containers. Uh, taking advantage of application auto discovery, we can tell you how your applications are behaving based on the Kubernetes and Docker constructs that they're running in, uh, as well as collect custom telemetry uh, that you send us directly from the applications yourselves. Most of us are here because we're either evaluating containers and orchestration or we've already adopted the technology. Uh, and we're not alone, but this is not, it's not only that more and more organizations are adopting, we also find that the average company quintuples its container usage within the first nine months of, of adoption. When you add orchestration to the mix, these numbers look a lot more aggressive. And I'd like to emphasize what monitoring means to these orchestrated applications. We've seen Kubernetes usage skyrocket in the last year and a half. And with that, we've been able to learn from the experience of our customers as they adopted this technology and spoke to us about their needs. In our studies, we see that uh, a host runs a median of seven containers each. Uh, this is just a median, and a lot of our customers uh, actually go to the extreme range of about 300 containers per host. Container lifetime uh, is about 2.5 days, whereas uh, VM's lifetime is about 25 days. And again, this is just a median. A lot of our customers uh, measure their container lifetimes in minutes and seconds. And orchestration uh, shortens the lifetime of the hosts themselves by 40% as well. Uh, that is to say, our customers are individually monitoring uh, tens of clusters with tens of thousands of hosts and hundreds of thousands of containers. And because of the portable nat nature of containers, they churn quickly, and those customers need to monitor millions of containers per day. I don't mean to, to scare anyone. It wasn't an accident that these teams scaled this way. Uh, this, is, this is the promise of elasticity, that when any one thing starts to go sideways, there are thousands to take its place. Uh, and services continue running, and customers are unaffected. To a greater degree than ever, our services are abstracted away from the resources that they rely on, but those resources are, are still there. In order to automate anything, we must be able to observe it. And operational complexity increases with the number of things that we're measuring, and the velocity of change. In orchestrated environments, both of these things are moving up and to the right. Uh, everybody knows uh, for yourselves what downtime costs. Uh, what we know is that for an average medium-sized cust uh, customer, uh, a company loses about $100,000 an hour for downtime. At a larger customers, that's more on the order of, uh, order of uh, 500,000. Uh, and that's just, uh, again, averages. And that's just revenue. That's not accounting for the effort of remediation. Uh, that's not, it's not you know, engineering time, negative Twitter mentions, whatever. So you need to be able to, to, to observe everything. You want to instrument everything. You want to start collecting metrics in staging and local environments while you're making these migrations so that you know what to expect when new technologies hit production. We've been monitoring most of these systems from well before we started adopting EKS in Kubernetes. We know what metrics are, are important to each of our components, uh, to the performance of each component. These are our work metrics. 
We also know what metrics that we use to troubleshoot when things start to go wrong. Those are resource metrics. But there are new questions that need answering. Uh, where are my containers running? Uh, some workloads run differently on differently optimized machines. Uh, there's no guarantee that uh, containers are spread across availability zones or hosts, except in the case of daemon sets. Uh, capacity is a fundamental factor in saturation, and Kubernetes comes with its own constructs and rules around this, et cetera. So tags are key to monitoring modern, uh, modern applications because they allow you to aggregate metrics across your infrastructure at any layer, uh, level you choose. Here, uh, we, we look at a, a file server, but this is actually an arbitrarily long uh, array of those tags. And what this allows us to do is slice and dice those metrics in any dimension. Uh, and we can aggregate to the level of pods, of uh, containers, of, of daemon sets, of replica sets, whatever new components that you need to monitor. And that's why tags are so important uh, to that monitoring. So now we can ask similar questions in new ways of new abstractions. We already used to monitor Nginx, but now you have that same Nginx in front of, of applications running in different pods or, or different deployments. And understanding the relationship between the metrics and the deployments is very important. So now we can answer those questions, whether or not we get the information from the pseudo files that describe the containers themselves in the file system, or from the Kubernetes or Amazon APIs, and then we can stitch them together in a single pane of glass. So I'd like to run through real quick how uh, you can do that in Datadog. So here we see all of the containers across my uh, sample cluster. But it's just uh, a big mass of containers right now. What could be helpful is using these tags and aggregating by deployment. It's the same metrics, but now we can see how it's behaving in different Kubernetes constructs. We don't have to stick to Kubernetes. Now we can look at hosts. And now you can see the different Amazon VMs that those deployments are scheduling containers on. So if you're making this migration, it takes some of the opacity, some of the uh, mystery away from what's happening in the scheduling. Similarly, uh, you can use Docker constructs. So we don't have to constrain ourselves to Kubernetes. Here we can see what images we're running. And we can also see what version they're running at. So you might want to make sure that, you know, here I might be in the middle of a rolling update, but if I'm not, I might want to make sure to take those older versions of my images and run them at, uh, at a consistent version. Here what I'm looking at is a similar view of data, uh, rather a different view of similar data. These are all containers, but what I'm showing you is that I can drill down not only into each individual container, but into the process tree inside each container. What we found when our customer, one of our customers turned this on is day one, that customer find that, found that they were duplicating processes, which means that even though they were talking about five or 10 megabytes extra per container, because of orchestration, these containers had enormously high leverage, and they were actually using almost twice as many resources as they meant to be using. So, in order to tune these things, in order to do optimization, which as engineers we do every day, we have to be able to observe what's going on in our system. This is uh, where most of our customers spend more of their time than on the host map. Here I can relate data to other data at the same point in time. You can see as I move my mouse over here, we can see what's going on. And each of these panels are aggregated to different levels. Here I'm looking at individual availability zones. Somewhere else I can look at clusters, I can look at uh, pods, and I can compare the behavior of uh, Nginx for one of my deployments with the pod behavior for a different application within that deployment. I also have one pane of glass here, which I'll demonstrate with this Nginx requests. Here I can view related logs. I can now look at the logs 
for what's running in that container without losing my velocity. I've already scoped to the application that I was looking at. I've already scoped to the 80 second time period that I clicked on. And now I can understand not merely that something happened in my metrics, but why something that happened in my metrics. And similarly, I can then pivot to application performance monitoring. Each of my application uh, makes calls to other services. A lot of the times, people are running microservice-oriented uh, architectures in, in containers. And here, I can see that something started in one service. It drills down into a Postgres query. We can see everything that's happening in that query, uh, et cetera. So as you can see, uh, monitoring EKS comes with new challenges, but it's not anything that we can't handle. Uh, and with tagging and, and Datadog, we can add a lot of sanity uh, to what's going on there. Uh, I'll be around all afternoon if anybody has questions, but thank you very much.